Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Hegemony. This game is a two to four player asymmetric board game in the world of policy. This is for ages 14 and up and takes roughly two to three hours to play. You will play as either one of four classes, the working class, middle class, capitalist class, or the state itself, trying to enact policy for your specific boards. You can either work as the working class, attempting to gain prosperity for your workers, maybe you play as the capitalist class, where you're attempting to move revenue into your capital, or maybe even as the state, where you're trying to control policy, add public services and state treasury, as well as benefits and provide events, or even as the middle class, which is kind of like a little bit between the working class and the capitalist class. You'll be utilizing your votes to change policy from either socialism to neoliberalism, or maybe you're gonna go from globalism to nationalism. You're also gonna have the opportunity to import and export goods and make trade deals, all while building buildings and securing your workers on those buildings. You'll go through five rounds of play, and at the end of the fifth round, you'll check to see who has the most victory points, and each of the different classes has an opportunity to score points in different ways, whether it be the working class gaining prosperity or the capitalist class gaining capital, or even as the state trying to control policy and make sure everything kind of balances out. This is going to be a complex game to understand, but it's an easy game to play. There's pretty much a straightforward round overview that takes you through the game, but because you're playing with different types of classes and different types of ways, it's all about understanding the balance in between making sure that you get enough money while securing uh, policies for your side, all at the expense of others, but they have the opportunity to kind of come back. And so you've got this weird social commentary going on in the game, along with the gameplay of securing what you need throughout. That is hegemony. We'll go ahead and take a look at the basic idea of setup, because this game is very complex. Uh, then we'll talk about the gameplay a little bit, and then finally my review. So let's go ahead and get into it. Hegemony has a large board presence. There's a lot going on in this game, and so I'll just take it to you step by step, okay? In the rules, it explains, depending on if you're playing a two or a three or a four player game, what you're going to add. If you're playing a two-player game, you'll have the working class and the capitalist class. And then with a three and a four-player game, you add the working class in and, of course, the state. When you are playing with just the two-player game, there are certain starting buildings you will add. You're going to add the state, which is kind of like a ghost character that just exists to allow the working class to be able to place their workers down. And um, you can kind of add them and into the mix as you have additional players. So, all right, the main game board. The first thing is you're going to include each player's uh, victory point counters on the zero marker over here. And then you're gonna look at over here, this policy sector. The base game suggests you start with the fiscal policy, then labor, then taxation, welfare state, healthcare, welfare state, education, foreign trade, and immigration. It'll go A1, a, 1C, right? 1 is this area here, the fiscal policy, and then C is the public sector of this fiscal policy. And then it'll be 2B, 3A, 4B, 5C, 6B, 7B. And that's the starting count of where all of these little markers, these little black markers, are going to indicate on this board here. And these are going to change throughout the game as players vote on them. Round 1, tax multiplier of 5. And the way you check tax multipliers is by going and looking on the boards here, and you go, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it tells you on this board here how this kind of moves around. Uh, then you'll have nothing on the voting results, events, or these state benefits, etc., etc., if you're not playing with the state player. But you will have state treasury, and it tells you, tells you how much you add, and I believe it's 120 bucks into the treasury. Public services as well, and this is all for a two-player game. It changes a little bit when you add more players to it. <laughs> uh, public services is going to be 5, 5, and 3, which is going to be for your um, health care, for your education, and for your influence. Over here in the public sector, this is going to be based on um, one of these policies here, and it'll determine how many of these rows are, are added, but to start the game off, you'll just have one of each. You'll have the public hospital, the university, and the station. You'll also set these little tokens here, also based on the labor market, which in this case will be on number two, which is yellow. You'll place all your little cubes there, which is like the second uh, form 
of payment. Like it's the not too too much money you're getting, but not you're not getting the lowest either. And then you have the private sector, and this is where the uh, capitalist is going to be putting his four starting buildings on. And in a two-player game, there's a little dot that is going to insinuate where you place these guys down. So you put these four down. Uh, and of course, along with the cubes that are going to go with it, in this case here, it'll be the second as well. The working class player is going to start with a certain number of workers, and there's going to be 10 total. And they'll start with the supermarket, the shopping mall, the public hospital, and the public university. And each of the workers indicate the type of speciality they have. Like a blue worker is good at uh, the different shopping districts, etc., etc. Uh, the supermarket place, pe people will need to get food, are going to be the green workers. And then the hospital will be white, etc., etc. There's a lot of workers here that illustrate which jobs they function with. And finally, you're going to have the unemployed workers. You'll start with one brown one or one gray one I should say and then you'll flip over an immigration card and that will determine which worker you add to it it could be a purple blue green white or orange the rest of the cards are going to be your immigration deck you'll shuffle that place that over there in the far corner you're going to have this deck over here which is going to be your deals deck you'll shuffle these guys up put them somewhere within reach of all players loans that you may need throughout the game this will change this starting board out here and then these guys here are your export policy cards all the rest of everything will be set aside. Your money, your voting cubes, uh, your uh, influence, you're going to have uh, your workers over here, your ability to go on strike or um, to cause a demonstration, and then all your currency. Your currency in the game, there's four currencies, education, healthcare, food, and technology. And you'll set all those aside over there. Then you're going to have to look at each player board individually. And there's in the rule book, it explains how you set up each player, as well as they're going to all get their own unique player aids, as well as a larger aid. And then there is a general aid. I'll just explain the working class and the capitalist class because there's a whole lot to go through. And this video would be very long if I did everything in the game. But uh, the uh, working class is going to get these two cooperative farms. Let me set aside that you may utilize if you get the cards from your deck here, because this is a card based game. You'll set your deck, you'll shuffle it and deal out seven cards. You'll have your main game board. You'll put your currency, in this case is 30, and one influence. Store your prosperity at zero and your population starts at 10. That's how many workers that you have out here. And then empty your trade unions. You'll have three of these voting markers and then one of your voting tiles. And then over here you have the capitalist guys. These guys are going to actually get a deck of cards that represents their buildings they put into play for the workers and for the middle class, the working class and middle class to go ahead and place on. You'll start with four reveal. This deck of cards that just like every other player is going to get seven cards here. And then you're going to get your uh, resources that people will buy from you. Food, etc, etc. It's all the same as the ones I talked about over there which of course you can set your prices for, for each of them, but you'll start in the middle for each of them to begin with, and one influence. Then you're going to get 120 bucks, and this is gonna go into your revenue, and you'll start with zero um, victory points, zero for the capital that you've gained from round to round, as well as three markers, and then your little fl four foreign trade thing here. Sometimes you only have a certain number of resources that you can carry, so in this case here, these are gonna transfer here if you have too many of them, and they can only then be used to sell or export to the foreign uh, industries. And then finally you have these little cogs here. These cogs, when you get them from your deck, will allow you to place them on your buildings, which will give you additional production, which can then in turn give you more money. Uh, then, I think last but not least, yeah, this is the last thing that's important here, is you're going to get voting cubes. And in a two-player game, it's just simply going to be eight, uh, you're going to get eight cubes for each of the four, three different players. The ghost player, which is the state, and then the working class and capitalist class. You'll have eight of these cubes that you put set in here, shuffle them up and place them down. I recommend, because uh, we're not using the middle class, you can go ahead and place this bag somewhere in the middle class sector here, because it's not going to have any buildings, because they don't exist in this game. Speaking of which, there are middle class workers, which when you have the middle class in play you'll add but in this case these uh these guys are going to be set aside you won't be using using them uh, in a two-player game but this should still give you a full understanding of, of that but that's the main setup for the game there's a lot of stuff all the things you're not utilizing for the other player words and decks can be set aside any tokens etc is going to be moved away as well okay let's get into basic gameplay. I'll do as best as I can. So I'm going to try and give you a full overview of how the game is played and what you do in it. We'll go through this whole round overview card. Each player has their own unique uh, uh, things that allow them to tell you what they do and I'll give you kind of an idea of what each of those guys do. But I'll just go through this. But to start with, if you have already set up, then you're done with the prep phase. The first round of the game 
is going to be done with prep. You just simply move on to action, production, elections, and scoring, and then you rinse and repeat up to five times. And on the fifth time, you're going to check to see any bonus scoring you might be doing, and then whoever has the highest score around the game board is the winner. But I'm just going to go through all of them to give you kind of an idea of what happens in this game. The first thing is you'll move the round marker. You'll take this marker here and you'll move it round two. So it happens after the first round, obviously. <laughs> then you'll pay interest on loans. It's $5 per loan. If you have no money, you have to take out a loan, you can get 50 bucks. But for every one of these guys you have during this phase, you pay $5 back to uh, the bank in order to secure the loan. Uh, you, otherwise, you have to take out another loan to pay off the loan. It can be nasty. You be careful with loans. <laughs> uh, then you're going to have to drop your profit. Prosperity. This will indicate for this working class character. So not all of these cover, not everything here is going to cover every specific person, but prosperity is how the working class is going to gain victory points. And they're trying to move this marker up as much as they possibly can. Then you will reveal events and political agendas. This is only for a four player game, but one of the specific classes is going to trigger events. Then after that, you are going to deal action cards out. You're always going to have seven to begin the round with. And when you play, you're always going to be playing five of them. And then after that, you'll be drawing back up to a hand of seven. Then you will reveal uh, any new companies that might pop out based on policy. You will draw business deal and export cards. You will get new workers and adjust population. So in this case here, if I'm playing with just the working class, then I would draw an immigration card and I would check to see what my basic worker is. If I'm drawing this immigration card and I have the middle class in, I would also check this one as well. So new workers will show up in the unemployed workers section. This is the workers that players will have to place onto the different uh, businesses. Uh, after you've uh, gotten new workers and adjusted population, then you're going to go on to the action phase. Uh, the action phase is pretty simple. One of the players will start and on their turn, all you're going to be doing is playing one of these cards here and doing what it says, or you can check out your basic actions. In this case here, I could take this, wor this working class, for example, and I could do these things here. I could propose a bill, assign workers, buy goods and services, strike, do a demonstration, and apply political, pr uh, political pressure. I'll, I'll explain a few of these right now. Why not, right? The propose a bill. I can take one of my markers and place it adjacent to a previous marker, and then that is going to be a policy I would like to change. I can assign workers. I can assign up to three workers from here or in in anywhere else uh, to companies and or trade unions. I can buy goods and services. I can buy them from a player. I can buy them from the foreign market. I can go on strike. I can place two strike tokens, which are these little these little guys here, uh, on companies where you have non-committed workers uh, with wages that are one or two. So you're trying to like strike so that nobody gets anything, but also uh, in hopes that the company or the capitalist class or the middle class is going to pay more. Um, and then there's demonstrations, applying political pressure, adding cubes to the bag to uh, apply the pressure of changing the results of the policies. And then you have a bunch of free actions as well. And so you would play one of these cards or do one of the many basic actions. And then after that, you will do a free action as well. And that could be to utilize your education or luxury to be able to swap your workers around, pay off a loan, any, any of those kind of things there. And the next player will get a chance to go and so on and so forth until all players have taken an action, played one of the cards in their hand or discarded a card to take a basic action. Like the, the capitalist player can util, can like buy a building and place it down on the board. There's some actions that are the same, like being able to change policy by putting one of their t tokens on there. Um, but yeah, you just play a card, do what it says, or discard a card and take an action based on your guide here. Once everybody has played all five of their actions, you're going to go on to production phase. You will then produce goods and services. So every one of the uh, buildings that have workers on them that are not on strike or not if there are no workers there, you won't get anything, but you'll produce valuable resources and you'll put it wherever you're putting the resources. Capitalist class is going to get resources. The uh, middle class will get resources. Even the state can get public service resources. Um, and then after that, uh, you're going to cover the needs. So anybody who has like uh, workers here, you're going to have to pay them. And you're going to pay them based on each of the different buildings' payments. So, okay, I am the capitalist. The working class is at my shopping mall and supermarket. I owe them $20 and I owe them $20 more. It's 40 bucks for the workers there and they get my $40. And you'll do that for everybody, right? 
um, you'll check certain things, uh, then you'll check, you'll, you'll check the IMF, you'll pay taxes, uh, paying taxes is, the capitalist class has more taxes to pay. They get pay, they have to pay taxes based on their workers and based on how much money, the revenue they've made, and then based on that, they'll move all the, re the their revenue over to capital. That's the money they've kept after everything. And the same will be said for everybody else. Working class has to pay a certain type of tax, and it's all charted right here. It's very simple how it works. You check the policy, you check the multiplier, and then you pay based on maybe it's how much money you have here. And the working class does the same. After you've paid all your taxes, then you'll refill the election bag, the, the bag here. This, this, oh, sorry. Yeah, the election phase. You'll re refill the bag. You'll add these tokens to the bag based on what it says. It'll be like, in this case here, uh, the capitalist class will get one cube for every two buildings they have that are occupied. Uh, the working class is going to get one cube for every, I don't know, uh, two workers they have. And then the state will get a certain amount. In this case, it'd be five. It, just look on there. It depends on the number of players, et cetera, et cetera. But you'll put cubes in this bag, and then you're going to carry out votes. Carrying out votes is going to be something like this. If I have a vote there, I want this policy to change to over here. You'll draw out five cubes. And then you're going to place these five cubes into the voter results. You will check for who wants what. So when, before the cubes are drawn, each player that is participating is going to be using one of these yes and no votes. If both players vote yes, um, in this case, the other votes would go to uh, their votes would go to yes, and the tied the player who's the state is kind of in the in the middle. If it's a tie, it goes to um, the player who wants the vote. Otherwise, if it is not a tie, it will stay where it's at. So basically, this is just going to move policy back and forth, and then these cubes are going to go away forever. It's a way to change the cubes up. And so you'll do that for all the policies, one through five, and then six and seven. And that will also change the results of a lot of things. Each of these has unique functionality as to how much money these are, how many public sector buildings there are, the different types of import and export costs, and the amount of business deals. It just goes on for a bit. There's a lot of things that you'll have to know about. Uh, scoring phase. You'll check your trade unions for the working class, et cetera, et cetera. Each, basically each of these different classes is going to check to see how they score. In this case here, if they are accruing enough prosperity, they will score points based on how far they get on this track. And the capitalists is, as they accrue capital, they're going to score additional points as they move across this track here. And they're always trying to accrue capital. These guys are always trying to accrue prosperity. And uh, after all this is done, you'll go back to the round overview preparation phase. You'll start at the very beginning here, and you'll move the round marker, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's how the game works. So in a nutshell, you Add all the things, each player has their seven cards and plays one card or discards a card to take an action until you only have two left. Then you do all the production, you give everybody their money and give everybody their goods and services. Then you're gonna carry out uh, the taxes, the elections, and then you'll check to see how you scored based on how well you did throughout the round. And you rinse and repeat until this fifth round here. Once the last round triggers, then you're going to check to see how you did. You'll check to see what of these uh, different sections you need. So in this case here, if I needed to be all on this side here, I'm gonna get bonus points for having these markers over here. If I wanted to be in the middle, maybe I'm the middle class, I want all these in the middle here, then I'll get bonus points as well. Or if I'm the working class, and one over here. Um, and then whoever has the most victory points, the track here that goes all the way around here is the winner of the game, Hegemony. So, okay, that's pretty much how the game is played. There's a lot more nuances, but I wanna get into my review now. Okay, so as you can see, this is a monster of a game. There's a lot of stuff going on. Learning how to play the game is, as far as like the understanding of the basic concept, is easier than probably setting it up. There's a lot of different pieces. There's a lot of choice. Each of the different classes plays different, similar to games like Root, as far as asymmetric gameplay goes. But they all have the same goal in mind. They're trying to accomplish their track. They're trying to accomplish their capital. They want in order to, to score as many victory points as possible. They want their policies to go where they need to go. At the end of the game, that's going to matter a lot, as well as throughout the game. Uh, you're going to have a lot of options in this game. Um, the first thing is the prep phase. The prep phase is actually pretty simple. I like the idea of being able to um, uh, draw action cards and decide during this phase what cards I want to utilize. Each of the different classes is going to have unique cards that will benefit them specifically. They might be bigger, better actions that you can take as opposed to your basic actions. 
maybe your basic action is going to let you, I don't know, buy from the, um, the, the goods in the foreign market. Uh, but a card in your hand might allow you to uh, buy goods at a cheaper discount or sell goods at a higher rate. Sometimes, maybe you might want to have a cooperative farm as the working class. So it will allow you to gain food without having to uh, spend, uh, have your workers go out and work. Uh, but they're just going to gain the, the, the food required in order for them to pay, to feed their workers. The uh, working class is kind of trying to gain the required resources to survive. And while they say that, they want to be happy. And they're trying to move this happiness track around. The capitalist class, they are only interested in money. They're trying to make the workers happy enough to not go on strike, but also gain more uh, revenue uh, than they did the previous round, keep as much revenue as possible, and move it into capital, thusly scoring higher on this track here. The state is trying to, obviously, gain money, control policy, and make sure everything is running smoothly, and then the uh, middle class, like I said, is kind of in the middle between the capitalists and working class. They want to place down buildings and also utilize their workers and manipulate the game to be able to create kind of this, this cohesive running engine. And that's kind of what everybody's wanting to do in this game is, is run their own engine. And, and, and when you're sitting down uh, and playing just one specific class, when you start this game off, you are going to have no clue what you need to do. You don't know if you're getting paid well. You don't know what a good policy is necessarily. You know where all your policies need to be, but why? And is this rate a good rate for this specific company I'm working for? Do I need to go on strike? Why or why not? There's gonna be a lot of questions you're gonna be asking as you go through this game. Your first game is going to be a total show. <laughs> and because of that, you are going to have at least one player probably not do all that well. They're going to be a manipulating policy to maybe some side they don't want to be on. They're going to be maybe adding too many workers as the working class and have to realize they need to pay for those workers by feeding them and taking care of them. And on the other side, the, the private sector has to make sure that they're able to pay all of their workers. They might have to sell off their buildings. So you might commit to a cer certain workers on a certain building and then another building, they're like, oh no, I'm paying this, this, this group of workers way too much money to the point where I can no longer pay any of my workers. But this game is also kind of a, a commentary of sorts on, on, on our system and how it kind of functions. That, that there's almost a need for balance in this game. Yes, everybody wants to have, uh, I don't know, uh, all the, the working class, the idea is everybody wants to have socialism as the working class. And everybody on the capitalist class wants to make as much money as humanly possible. But you have the commentary of understanding that it needs to run as an engine. It, there has to be some give and take. You can't just have everything one way because sure, that's great, you've made all the money, but now no one can afford to even continue living. There, these people have to leave because they can't afford uh, healthcare or their food. You know, the middle class has to balance their need for money as well as their need to kind of control their, their the people who are working so that everything kind of balances out. And the state has to be like, okay, these guys gotta be happy, these guys gotta be happy, but I'm gonna keep as much, I have my own goals as well, but I have to maintain at least uh, enough to where no one is completely angry, you know? And there's this like wonderful little balancing scale that this game has in it. Everybody has to kind of cooperate together and move policy around. Uh, normally, like, like I said, policy is kind of, you, you know what you want, but the problem is getting what you want is not always what's best for you. And you have to kind of secure that based on what everybody else is doing. At a certain point in the game, if you are not careful and you do not make your engine correctly, you might be putting out workers, giving them a lower wage to the point where that you cannot feed them. Or the capitalist class might be putting out buildings, paying for all this stuff. You've made this huge grand stadium and no one's coming. No workers are there and you've wasted all your money. And now it's a detriment to you because now that you need workers there, you have to pay them a very low wage to come there. And so you're, you're giving more than you're actually getting. And so there can be like detriment to that. So the, the commentary works wonderfully. The fact that we have these policies here are super cool. You have to uh, understand, okay, this, this is gonna secure how many different buildings are gonna be in the public sector and how, how, many, how, many, how much the state is gonna be controlling where the workers are gonna work at. The labor market, you would pay the workers really, really, um, really, really well by, by, by paying them really high or really, really low. <laughs> the taxation is how much tax is gonna be represented in the game. Like, we, okay, the capitalist class really doesn't wanna be taxed. The working class, eh, is not a big fan of taxes. The state loves taxes. Oh, welfare, oh, we really want free healthcare for everybody, but somebody's gotta pay for it. <laughs> is the capitalist now gonna 
going to pay more taxes? Absolutely they are. And the capitalist doesn't want to pay more taxes. They don't mind the free health care you're getting. They just don't want to pay for it. Like, oh my gosh, we can't afford it because now the capitalist class, middle class, starting to go into debt because of it. We've got to move that policy back. The welfare and education state. Okay, let's give everybody free uh, education. But now who's paying for it? We are. I'm paying for it. I don't want to pay for it. And so as you play this class, you start to realize, oh, Oh, this is why I want to move this policy over here. This is why I don't want this policy over here. But I also don't want to push it to the point where if I push it way too far, this class can't function anymore to the point where they can't pay me. I can't make any goods and services. And so you're kind of securing this kind of tilting scale where you're just trying to make sure that the scale is just a little bit in your favor. Otherwise, it all comes crashing down. <laughs> the voting policies is a really cool idea of the game, allowing players to kind of vote where they want. You're always going to usually cho choose for your side, but there is the, the chance that you're going to be like, you know what, I need to let them have a little so I can get more later on in the game. And that's all excellent. Uh, this game is, is very simple in nature. Once you understand your class, you mean, I, I, my, 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 what I suggest you do, explain the base idea of the game. Go through the round overview and then give each player their classes, let them look up their basic actions and give them their large rules aid and let them read that to understand the basic concepts. Then give them a basic understanding of what they want and why they want it, but also why they might not always want exactly what they want. And from there, let players try it out. Let players fiddle around with it and see how it works. Um, after the first one or two games, players are going to get the different classes, kind of understand how it functions, and they're going to have this kind of cohesive engine that is being built by all players in the game so that they can all score victory points. But then it comes down to just the nitty gritty of who's tipping the scales more in their favor. Um, Okay, so the quality of the game. This game is a 10 out of 10 quality. It's beautiful, all the pieces are, are there. Everything is kind of in their own sector. You know where to get everything. Bam, import, export, foreign. Bam, policy over there. It's all your events, benefits, and your voting. And then of course your round markers. This is my place, I'm the capitalist. This is my place, I'm the state. And over here I'm the middle class and I have these. Our workers are down there. They're coming in from migration and they're being put uh, into uh, our, our areas here and you can con con control that based everything that you see on this board here is controlled right here how many workers how much foreign trade how much wages how uh, much education and how much welfare etc etc and all balance is that allowing you to utilize these markers here and so it flows and it feels good seeing the pieces come on the game board and you kind of have this function of society existing on this large large map this, this large space here <laughs> Um, so yes, quality, the design, the artwork on all the cards. There's not a huge amount of artwork in the game necessarily um, as far as what it looks like on the game board, but on each of the cards for all the players is a ton of beautiful artwork. All the buildings are really well done. Just just a solid, solid job illustrating the different types of buildings and how they function and, the, and then color coding them together. The graphic design hits well with the artwork and works beautifully. Uh, gameplay. This, I... Uh, uh, Man, it is a love and like, I don't know about love and hate, but like you have to weigh uh, gameplay for, this is gonna be niche for certain people. This game takes a while to understand. And once you understand how it's played, it's going to take a while for you to understand how to play your class, how to best tip the scales in your favor and how not to go too far one way or another because it can mess you up as well. And uh, that's gonna push some people away. The play time in this game, quite honestly, is gonna be two and a half hours for like a two player game. And if you're playing with four, which I recommend, then it's gonna be up to three and a half, four hours. It's gonna be a little while. So uh, you have to have players that understand this game. Usually in this case, players who play this game typically are gonna come back and play with the same play group because there is a bit of setup, a bit of time that is put into understanding the game. Uh, but that being said, once I have my play group and they understand this game and we started uh, and they understood this game and they started playing this game, uh, each player wanted to try out a different class and switch around the roles. That's where it got fun and interesting and you started to see the different dynamics in play. The game is cohesive. There is a really unique system to it. Uh, that being said, Things can crash, and on your first couple of games, it might. Some players might get destroyed, might not, re not understand the reasoning for why they're doing certain things, and that's just all part of this game. It is a commentary as on one side, and it is a manipulation of mechanics slash creating an engine on the other, and then there's right in the middle just a little bit of social interaction that changes the game and molds it to what it is. 
This is actually a really, really good game. It's very, very solid. I really enjoy this game. If you can get through the setup, the explanation of play, and going through and learning the different types of asymmetric roles and realizing why things are important and why you need certain actions and when you need certain actions, you're going to love this game. Okay, a, a little bit of the negative. Yeah, like I said, otherwise in otherwise those basic things, uh, you have to understand policies and understand why certain things are where they are. If you do not understand why something is where it is or why it needs to be at, at one certain point in the game, then you're gonna get lost. You're gonna get confused. You're not gonna understand that there are some workers here. Okay, I've got my workers here, just as an example. There's some math involved and they're getting paid 20, right? They are producing four for the capitalist, okay? I have to pay my workers in food. If my food costs are higher than the wages they are getting, then it's going to be very challenging in order for me to feed them. Thusly, working for this company might not be of benefit, unless the capitalist reduces his prices. In which case, I'd say, hey, I'd rather work for you than the middle class or the state, provided you lower it so that I can afford my food so I can make some type of income. And you have to understand that concept. You have to understand there's a certain amount of math involved. Uh, okay, and even though I've now I make enough to where I have enough food, am I able to also pay the taxes? In which case I can then utilize what I've gained, my resources to gain prosperity to where I can make trade unions. And that is gonna come with the game as well. The capitalist class has to think about that as well. He has to go, okay, is it better for me to give my food and whatnot to the working class, even though sometimes they can just buy it from me, how much I should charge is gonna be very important, or should I use my excess to go to the foreign market? Can I change or move this policy so that foreign value gives me more than the workers around here? And if so, sure, but I wanna pay them. And if I don't have to pay them, I, can just, I don't have to give them resources. They can just give my resources up. When I do that, Am I hurting myself because the workers who work for me are these guys here? Giving too much out here, not feeding these guys, maintaining them is going to cost me. And how much is it going to benefit me? Oh, is it going to be the difference between five and ten dollars? Or is it going to be the difference between failing and succeeding? And then you weigh those things as well. So, yeah, this is, ah, it's a mixed bag. Like, it's one of those games, I, I, I love the idea of this game. I love the concept of each of the different classes and roles and how the state is trying to, like, control everything and balance. The, the, the commentary is excellent. The gameplay is flowing, works very well. But my, my main nitpick is literally just, if you do something that tips it too far, it's gonna mess with the gameplay. It's gonna mess with your play. It's gonna make your experience not so great. And in a four hour game, that can be detrimental. So yes, you need to have people going into this expecting and knowing what this type of a game is. And you have to be able to explain it pretty well at the very beginning and the start of the game that, so that they are fully aware. And then have that group play through a few games um, over the course of, I don't know, weeks or days or whatever, whatever it is, however your game group likes to play games. And I think they will enjoy this game. I, I really like this game. I'm going to give this like a 7.5 out of 10. It's a solid game. Everything about the quality and components is excellent. The, 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 the choices you make, the engine building, it's so, so much fun. If you can get past the slog and the choices that can be kind of mentally taxing and the idea of how you have to manipulate everything and where it all changes and how it all changes, and you don't mind that. In fact, if you like that type of a puzzle, it'll increase that score up to like a 9. Okay, maybe even a 10 for people who enjoy those, those slight actions that change things and manipulate things to like better betting yourself or detrimenting yourself in a huge way. Um, and if you like, of course, card placement games and there's so many open options to choose from, this is gonna be your game. I enjoy this game. I'm gonna play this game uh, a few more times with a few more groups of people. I'm gonna try and see how I can teach them and see if they're gonna understand it uh, better. Um, but for me, I think it's just not a game that's going to hit as much. It's not going to come out as often because it's very, very heavy and there's a lot of different choices and a lot of different teachings. So, uh, it's going to sit on the shelf probably a few weeks and then I'm going to be able to play it with the next group of people and I want to show off the expansions of the historical events and the crisis and control expansion and then it'll price it for a little bit longer. That's just the type of game this is for my game group. But if it's, from, if this is for you, if you feel like this is for you and you love the commentary involved in this as much as I do, then this is a solid pickup. I think, I think in general, this is a solid pickup just to have an understanding, because they do a very good job, of what it's like to have these roles that exact in society.
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Hegemony. If you enjoyed this review, you can go ahead and like, comment, and of course, subscribe. There's a subscribe button and bell notification. If you see more than one of our videos, go ahead and push that. We greatly appreciate it. You can also go ahead and hit the uh, link in the description where you can pick up this game. Man, I feel like I rambled. There's just, this game is like, oh, I know I rambled. I, I mean, I, I ramble when there's games that take like a lot of time to explain because I want to give you as much info as I can. I'm, I'm even rambling now. I, I, I hope this helped you in some way and I wasn't too confusing. Go ahead and check our live streams every Wednesday and every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. Wednesday is whatnot and on Sunday it's everything else. Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitch. Uh, we played a live stream of this game the other day and you can see us fail miserably at it because we couldn't get the uh, tactics down. We had to sit there and play again after the stream. The, uh, and actually I, brought, I had to bring in two more people just to see what it'd be like playing with the four player variant, which was so much better. All right, guys, that's, that's all I got. And as always, I look forward to uh, gaining all your capital or making myself prosperous or maintaining the balance of the system with you next time. <laughs>